Hey everybody, Martin from Quad Spinner here, and today I will cover the repeat seamless and bomber nodes. And afterwards, I'll show you how I use them in my work with the stylized Icelandic mountain. These are three awesome nodes to work with textures and shapes. The seamless node preps shapes or color textures for tiling by making the edges seamless. The repeat node is used to tile shapes or color textures. Using a warp, this can create a very cool rock detail, for example. The bomber node is very cool. It scatters shapes or textures over another shape. In our case, we scattered this Voronoi on top of a constant. We can control the amount of scattered items using iterations. The multiplier multiplies the number of iterations. Size controls the smallest and biggest elements that got scattered. When we turn up size distribution, it guides the amount of variation in size we see. When we turn it up, we see more and more contrast between the small and big items. Rotation controls the amount of random rotations the scatters have. Maintain proportions will make sure the proportions of the terrain underneath are maintained, as you can see with this mountain input. Variable height gives you individual control on the height using the height slider underneath. Distribution gives you two options, random and grid. Random will scatter the input randomly across the terrain. Grid gives you sort of a tiled look. The jitter slider can break up the grid for a bit of random variation. Fade edges gives the input shape an edge node before it's scattered. This could be useful when you have a shape that produces sharp vertical edges on the bomber scatter. Below this, you can set the various blend modes. Although in most cases, max or blend is probably your best bet, sometimes using different blend modes can give you really unique looks. Quality determines the quality of the scattered items. In most cases, medium will work fine, but if you're exporting at high resolution, such as 16K, and you notice that the scattered shapes are rasterized, you could set the quality to high instead. Now let's get into the Icelandic terrain that I made using these three nodes. So we're gonna start off with our mountain node here, set to a basic, medium bulk, and a height of 175. Very simple, add an erosion too, and we're instantly gonna have a bit of down cutting. Erosion scale's been changed to 500. We're gonna add a little bit of bed load, and we are going to make sure that the shape is at the 0.4 and the shape sharpness 0.7. This will give us that kind of thermal eroded look, very triangular. And we're gonna be adding a bunch of detail on top of this. So at this point I have a choke point and I run it into two transpose nodes mixed with our cool detail using seamless repeat and also bomber. So we're gonna use a file to get a texture I enforce linear gamma, I height remap it to something a bit more manageable and drop it to the floor. I use the seamless node to just lower those edges and make sure that the repeat works perfectly. And I set the tiling to six. Afterwards, I warp it slightly and then it's ready to be transposed on top of our terrain. The transpose here is set to one, it is fully transposing and it's as you can see, it's not that extreme. It's been blended with a very blurred out slope mask. So I set it to 0.5 because transpose tends to kind of bulk up your terrain. So if you don't blur your slope mask enough, you'll see a very noticeable blobby bulking happening. But the rock detail here is very refined and nice and gives us that really cool slate rock look. We can then add erosion afterwards. But first, I'm actually going to go through the bomber look, which is the one I actually ended up going for because it looked a bit more unique and cool and less like slate rock you would see in the Alps. So I take my file, run it through the seamless, and then have a bomber with the constant input here, set to zero. And this creates just this really cool rock mask right here, just a whole field of debris. The iterations are 100, multiplier 2, so it's 200 iterations. I did not use the size distribution because I was kind of happy with the actual look I got out of this. The rotation is fully randomized. I did not have to maintain proportions really because it's just a constant that it's scattered on. Variable height I didn't choose to use because the texture was unique enough for me to get quite a varied look. And I just used the basic max blend mode, no fading of edges. However, I did set the quality to high. Since this is a texture, I just wanna make sure that it really takes the full quality and uses it. I also transpose it same way with the mask. However, the amount is set to 50 because this one is a lot more extreme. This gave me extremely cool rock detail all over the cliffs. As you can see here, it's kind of stratified. It's extruding in bits. It looks very, very randomized and unique. I ran this through an erosion node set to max with a bunch of sediments being added. 
so you can really see how that blends this whole thing into the terrain quite nicely. You could also choose not to set it to max blend mode and just erode over it. Uh, it just depends on how many of the details you want to keep. I wanted to make these details pop for the showcase, so I chose max, but you can just play around after you've added this rock detail. Uh, just use maybe a thermal erosion to kind of blend it into the terrain better. You can use all kinds of things afterwards. I use a shaper to bulk up the terrain a little bit. And at this point, I add my snow just a little bit sprinkled in the uh, concaves here on top. Uh, I melted it quite a bit, as you can see, and the slip off angle is set quite high. So it really sticks to this upper area. And there's the choke point. So for our texturing, we're gonna prepare a few base layers of grass and dirt, and then also a rocky dirt layer. So we're gonna start off with the grass and dirt, which was made by using this texture base with heavy flow influence and a little bit of patches multiplied with this slope map. What you'll see here is that we basically darken the rest of the actual map except for the slopes. This gave me this look of this grassy mossy look, but then this darker color on and around these kind of rocky sloped areas. The sap map we use is number 298 on the rock. We only use half of it and it gives us these really cool Icelandic colors. We're gonna run this through a color erosion. However, it is quite low on the color hole. Um, because we already have a lot of flow influence, we don't need the texture to flow along that far. After we use color erosion, we're actually going to mix in a texture to just add a bit of that gritty detail back into the sap map. So we're gonna mix it with this texture. In my case, I'm using a rock texture, but you could use grass textures or whatever kind of texture you want. I run it into the repeat node by connecting both the in and the color. And after tiling it eight times, I only take the texture out of it and run it through an HSL node. Here, I take away all the saturation because I don't want the color to change on my actual sap map. I just want those kind of cool details. I run it through a very light color erosion, setting color hold to 0.25. Don't forget like me to actually insert your 3D shape here. I use a portal from my choke point into the color erosion. And then I run this through an overlay on top of my sap map. So you can see that the grass and dirt becomes extremely dark, but we're also getting those cool details from the texture over our sap map here. To correct this, I'm using an HSL node set to one to just bring back that brightness. We basically just get this really cool detail run over our sap map. This is gonna give us a lot of kind of realistic detail and grunge onto our actual colors. And this is something that maybe you would do in Blender while texturing, but you can now do this easily inside of Gaia. Next, I will prepare the rock color using the actual rock that we transpose on top of these cliffs. Again, running it into the repeat, both in and color, taking the texture out of it. And here I remove most of the color, darken it quite a bit, run it through a very light color erosion and using the mask, which is a slope mask with quite a heavy slope selection and selecting the height by using mask by height, ran through a color erosion and then a curve to clamp down on this actual mask. We're going to mix both these layers and get this really cool, dark, contrasty look between the volcanic black dirt and the mossy green grass. Next, I use the snow output from this portal, run it through a color erosion with some light diffusion and very light transport distance to kind of have this kind of melting look below it. And I add that on top of this terrain with the screen function. And then I run it into a light X node to showcase to you guys. Mind you, this is a very stylized look. It's not super accurate to an actual Icelandic terrain. I just like the colors and I thought it's a cool way of showing off this crazy rock detail. There's all kinds of cool ways of using this and getting a bunch of detail out of it and putting it on your terrain. So I hope this video helped you guys a lot and I'm looking forward to what you guys think about this set of nodes that maybe not everybody knows about, but now you do.